Jeff. I just saw my this red wall because I have and the Father wants us to surrender all. Yeah. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his present state of I surrender all. But holding up, thank the Lord Jesus. 2,000 years ago, hallelujah, the Father gave us the very best he had. Yeah. We're holding up. He surrendered all. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. History was changed because he surrendered all. Lives are impacted because he surrendered all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I want to tell you, when you surrender all, your life will never, ever, ever be the same. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. We worship God in the beauty of his holiness. Hallelujah. We want to say good morning, good morning, and praise God. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good this morning. is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Praise the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Glory to God. And so I want to say good morning again to each one of you and all to our Facebook family, social media family, uh, whether you may watch this broadcast. I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome here at House of Faith Christian Center located in beautiful Smyrna, Tennessee. Praise the Lord and glory to God. We are so glad to be in God's service one more time. And we're so glad you'll be a part of this worship experience that you tune in and uh, we pray that you will receive not only a word of God, but a word from God that will change your life forever. Praise the Lord. And I want to tell you, we, today we say we surrender all as we celebrate, praise the Lord, Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing. Christmas 2021, praise the Lord. We pray you had an awesome Thanksgiving 2021. And uh, truly you are thankful to God, thankful to Jesus, thankful to the Holy Spirit. And now we get right into this season of celebration. Praise the Lord. So again, House of Faith Christian Center, we have a threefold vision of House of Faith. That is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. And we believe it is no accident you tune into this broadcast to be a part of worship service as we worship here in the beauty of His holiness here at House of Faith Christian Center. So listen, if you are enjoying this, you will continue to join us. You watch us by social media. Go ahead and hit like and hit share. Hit like and hit share. And to go ahead and let everybody know that House of Faith Christian Center that we are on the air. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it one more time. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And so we are really anticipating uh, this word of God. So again, go ahead and hit like and hit share. You have an opportunity to go ahead and contact all those family members. Let them know House of Faith Christian Center is on the air. Contact mama them, daddy them, baby brother them, baby sister them, pookie them, chiquita them. Contact all the EMs. Let them know House of Faith Christian Center that we are live and we are on the air. Praise the Lord. And we are glad to be back in God's service with our saints here at House of Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord. Again, as Pastor Terry uh, reiterated this morning, uh, we've been away for the last couple of weeks spending time with family. Uh, praise the Lord. And as a minister, minister on last Sunday, uh, we were there in Lakeland, Florida. He talked about a refreshment, engagement, and priorities. Praise the Lord. I feel refreshed. I'm ready to get engaged. And Jesus is Lord, so he's my top priority. Praise God. So we're just glad to be in all things God do. And again, uh, thank God for you, you that are here uh, since this morning and worship with us. And we to give uh, thank, thanks to, uh, again, Minister uh, Derek Claybrook. Praise the Lord. Uh, he talked about a war, uh, being in the arm of God. Hallelujah. You fit for the battle. Praise the Lord. Let them know that you're not on a playground. You're on a battleground. Praise the Lord. So, again, we're glad to be in God's service one 
more time and glad you'll be a part of this worship experience. So we'll get right into the word. So I want you to go ahead and make sure you got your Bibles and make sure uh, you've got a pen and paper and prepare to take some uh, copious notes this morning. And it's going to be so awesome as we celebrate Jesus, Christmas time, the anointed one and his anointing in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So let's go ahead and get our Bibles out. And uh, let's go ahead and make this confession of our faith. Praise the Lord, glory to God. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, ready, get ready, get ready, ready, ready. All right, say these familiar words. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I am now ready. I am now ready. Ready, ready, ready. Ready, ready, ready. To receive. To receive. The dynamic. The dynamic. The powerful, the powerful, ever increasing, ever increasing the life changing, the life changing word, of God. word of God. My mind is alert. My, mind is alert. My heart is perceptive. My heart is perceptive. I, boldly confess, I boldly confess. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I boldly, boldly confess. I boldly, boldly confess. I'll never, never be the same. I'll never, never be the same. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess. After hearing God's word today, I'll never, never, never be the same. I'll never, never, never be the same. For thine is the kingdom, and mine is the kingdom. For thine is the power, and mine is the power. For thine is the glory, and mine is the glory. Forever, and ever, and ever. For this is my receiving day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, you watch this live. Let's go ahead and hit like and hit share. Like and hit share. Let's go ahead with our passing our handouts right now. And then we'll get right into the word of God. Praise the Lord. All right. Glory to God. Well, I got the handouts. Here they are right here. Praise the Lord. All right. I accidentally picked them up. Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and be like, where's my handouts? All right. Pass the handouts. Get you your handouts. All right. So again, this season. Now this year, all year long, we've been teaching on the subject of a grace to follow God's Son in 2021. And uh, uh, I tell you, listen, we've just been following God's Son uh, all this year, praise the Lord, specifically tuning in to some things of God. And uh, scripture that God has given us is uh, the book of Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Mark chapter 8, verse 34 in the Amplified Version. And it says, And Jesus called to him the throne with his disciples and said to them, If anyone intends to come after me, let him deny himself, forget, ignore his own, and lose sight of himself and his own interests, and take up his cross, and joining me as a disciple, and riding and siding with my party, Follow with me, continually cleaving steadfastly to me. And so what we've been teaching all year long is that there is a distinction between being a part of the crowd and being part of the committee. When you're part of the committee, you are a disciple. You are a follower of Jesus. And, and so if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, and we've been following Jesus, uh, praise the Lord, all of our lives, but especially during this year, and we had a grace. It was a favor. It, grace is God's unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor. Grace is God's listen, operational power working on our behalf. Grace is the ability of God to put his super on our natural so we can do supernatural things that we could not do in our own human flesh. So again, this grace that we have, and we follow God's son, Jesus, in 2021. And so uh, all year long, we've been looking at different areas of how we follow Jesus. We begin in 2021 and talk about following Jesus through the Lord's Prayer. We went through the, the prayer, which is not really the Lord's Prayer. It was a model prayer that Jesus gave uh, his disciples to follow. And then we looked at following Jesus as our good shepherd. And we looked at the 23rd Psalm of how we, we follow Jesus uh, uh, as the shepherd. And, you know, a, a, as the, the, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, you know, the bishop shepherd, all, all of our souls. And then we looked at following Jesus uh, uh, through uh, the churches in Revelation. And we looked at those seven churches and how we follow Jesus and how Jesus spoke specifically things to each particular church that we have. 
And then we talked about following Jesus through the local church and uh, the words that Jesus says that I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. So we talked about how following Jesus in the local church. And then last time we talked about following Jesus uh, with a thankful heart. That, that Jesus gave thanks unto the Father for specific things. He, he thanked the Father that the Father always hears him when he prays. He, and also uh, that uh, Jesus was thankful that uh, the Father gave revelation uh, to, the, to not to the wise, but to the unwise and to those who are, who are certain following Jesus and that we have. So we've been looking at following Jesus all through this year, 2021, with heaven grace. So now we come to this Christmas season, uh, the last few weeks of this year, 2021, praise the Lord, and uh, we're going to go out in grand style. So today, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, for the next few weeks, following Jesus for a peaceful Christmas. Glory to God. Following Jesus for a, a, a peaceful Christmas. And the scripture that God is going to speak to us is John chapter 16 and verse 33. John chapter 16 and verse 33, following Jesus for a peaceful Christmas. And he amplifies these things. Now, Jesus is coming to the close of his earthly ministry. And he has some things that he's speaking to his disciples, all right? Now, again, he's not speaking to the crowd. He's speaking to the committed ones, to those who made the decisions to follow Jesus. And notice what he says here. He says, now, I have told you these things that Jesus has spoken to the disciples, several things. And why did Jesus speak to us? All right. Why, why does Jesus, why pastor always say, you know, we need to hear the words of Jesus. We need to read our Bible, the gospel of Jesus. Why is that? Now notice here he says this. He said, I've told you these things. He says, notice that in me. Now, when Jesus says in me, we have to define that because again, a uh, religion will say, well, just Jesus. Well, yeah, but you gotta go, you gotta dig a little deeper in that. Now, when he says in me, that means in me who I am. Who am I? I am the son of God. I am the one loved by God. I'm the one who comes to give you a revelation of what God and who God is. So in me and through Jesus, in me, also in what I talk. See, my, my, my teachings, my saying, see, in, in me, what I teach. Also in my commandments. In me involves the commandments I give unto you. In me. In my teachings. My teachings. See, in me. What, what, what have I taught you? See, I'm teaching some things. And what I'm going to do for you on the cross. In me. So he says, in that, in who I am, in what I said, in what I taught, in what I commanded, commanded, and what I'm going to do for your cross. See, in that, watch this, you will have perfect peace and confidence. Glory to God. Now, that's in me. So, whenever you are in what Jesus said, what Jesus taught, what Jesus commanded, what Jesus did for you on the cross, and who Jesus is, listen, you are guaranteed a perfect peace peace and confidence all right because jesus came to represent the kingdom of god that's what he came now he's now going to shift and tell you what happens when you're not in who jesus is in what he said in what he taught in what he commanded in what he did for you on the cross, when you're not in that, this is what's going to happen to you. He says, now, in the world. All right? So evidently, there's a difference for being in Jesus and being in the world. Now, when I'm talking about in the world, I'm not talking about just living in existence. Now, we know everybody lives in existence in this world. But in this world, he's talking about a worldly system. All right? Everybody say worldly system. Worldly system. A, a, a worldly system now. When you are not in Jesus' system, you are now in another system called the world system. And what's going to happen to you when you're in the world system? This is what's going to happen. He says in the world system, he says you'll have tribulation. Guaranteed. In this world system, he says you will have trials. In this world system, you will be having distress. And in this world system, listen, you will have frustration. 
He said, but listen, when all those things come against you, because you were in the world, you're in another world, and when this world system tries to suck you in into their way of thinking, I want you to remember something. He says, I want you to be of good cheer. Hallelujah, glory to God. Now what does that mean? It says to take courage, be confident. We just sung a song. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. He said, now you take confidence. Watch this. You be certain. He says, listen, you be undaunted. Why? How in the world can, listen, I be a good cheer in a world system that wants to give me tribulation, that wants to give me trials, that wants to stress me out, that wants to give me frustration, that wants me to be worried and, and, and be the care. How do I deal with this situation? He says, I'm going to be a good cheer. I'm going to take courage. I'm going to be confident. I'm going to be certain I'm dying. Why? He says, because I have overcome the world or this worldly system. What does that mean? For instance, it says, I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Glory to God. Christmas. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, um, you, so, so we enter this Christmas season. As one writer says, the most wonderful time of the year. Hallelujah, glory to God. And, and I want to let you know that Jesus is referred to as the unspeakable gift. Because a lot of times during the Christmas time, we, we, we think about gifts and we think about giving and, and, and presents and things like that. I remember, you know, growing up in, in my home as, as a little boy, uh, uh, Christmas time was a very special time for giving and, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you, you were trying to find the right presents and uh, the right gifts that you have. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I remember I was, you know, I had, my mama had me a little Christmas savings account when I was young, and I put 50 cents every weekend in my savings account. That's my Christmas account, all right? And I, I, I had my little coupon book, and you know, I give mama 50 cents, she go put it in, you know, for it, you know, and and, and you know that's 25 weeks, in, in the, uh, 26 weeks in the year, you know, and so at the end of the year, I had $25. Now back then, $25 went a whole long way. <laughs> oh God. Boy, I could buy everybody and get some $25. I said, how you do it? I said, Lord, hallelujah. I saved my little fifty dollars, you know, because see, I, I took a joy of being able to give people different gifts. Been saving all year round because that was something special, you know. And I was, and I would see, you know, the faces on my mom and my dad's face, you know, and and uh, you know, I would give them stuff, you know, and and I wasn't too good at wrapping gifts, you know, but I prayed I did the best I could, you know, and uh, and so they were getting there like, oh, thank you, Ron, because I love seeing the expression. Of their receiving a gift. Well, glory to God. We do the same tradition we have in our family now. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, we're doing Christmas time. Uh, on Christmas, uh, uh, we get gifts and everybody gives. And, you know, we take one gift at a time and we go all the way around and different things, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing. Praise the Lord. All the time we spend in wrapping the gift and how it gets toned up in 10 seconds. <laughs> All that time you spend five minutes wrapping one gift and then destroying the ten seconds. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But there's something special about giving and receiving gifts. How many know what I'm talking about? You're glory. How you like? You know you like getting a gift. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, they, and there, there's some uh, uh, women who, who are who are single and dating the guy, uh, uh, you know, for a few years, you know, and, and, and let's say he's been maybe kind of dragging his feet a little bit. And so Christmas, you expecting something under that tree. Hallelujah. You expect a special gift, you know. Praise the Lord. And uh, 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 and sometimes you throw little hints to people, you know. Uh, uh, you know what? This is this kind of wearing out a little bit where it is, you know. And, uh, you know, so there's something anticipating about gifts. But I want to tell you, praise the Lord, that Jesus Christ is considered as the unspeakable gift. Why? Because there's words that can never describe who he is, what he said, what he taught, what he commanded us, what he did for the cross, which was not. So therefore, the Bible says he's called the unspeakable gift. But although he's an unspeakable gift, I stop out and let you know that he has a special gift at Christmas time for all of us. And this gift is called the gift 
of peace. If I say the gift of peace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, listen, this gift of peace is opposite of what the world has to offer. The world has to offer tribulation. The world has to offer distress. The world has to offer worry. The world has to offer frustration. The world has to offer depression. And all these things the world will offer, even at Christmas time, but I stop to let you know that Jesus is qualified to give us this season peace because he has overcome the world and he has deprived it of its power to hurt us and to harm us. Now, when I talk, so we're going to talk about how to receive this gift of peace. And I want to give you some practical tips on how to use God's word to worry less. Somebody say amen. Amen. Defeat stress. Somebody say okay. Okay. Amen. amen. And receive the gift of peace at Christmas season. Now, in this scripture, the word peace. Everybody say peace. Peace. Now, the Greek word for peace is a Greek word by the name of orene, orene. And it, it, it means a sense of rest. Uh, it means a sense of quiet. And so Jesus, on one hand, says that during this Christmas season, I, I want you to be at rest. I want you to have a sense of, of calmness about you. During this, during this Christmas season. I want you to listen to me now, all right? Because sometimes we miss the reason for this season. Oh, I'm just so stressed out. No, that's not Jesus. Jesus don't give you stress. Oh, I'm just so worried right now. That's not Jesus. Jesus, I want to come give you not only peace, but perfect peace. And so this word is, but I, I want to step on further because there is a Hebrew word for the word peace. And the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. If I say shalom. Shalom. Now, even today, many times, even in, in, in Jewish cultures, they, they greet one another. The first thing they say is shalom, which can be translated peace. But this word shalom, it, it means much, listen to me now, it means much more than just being quiet. It, it means much more than just having rest. This word shalom, it, it, it means completeness. It, it, it means wholeness. It, 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 it means that you are prosperous. It means that you are well favored. So Jesus says that at Christmas time, listen, I want to give you something here. I want you to give you a gift of peace. I want to give you a gift of prosperity. I want to give you a gift of being well favored. I want to give you a gift of wholeness and completeness. And when something is whole, when something is complete, that means there's nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing broken. How they go with it. God. And Jesus said, it's Christmas time. This is my gift to you that this Christmas you will experience something that maybe you've never experienced before, a gift of wholeness, a gift of completeness. There'll be nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing broken. Amen. Wholeness. I want you to think about a cake. Many of you are going to be doing baking cakes during this, during this time, you know, praise the Lord. And, 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 and if you need a taste tester, just give me a call. I'll, I, I, I can fit you in my business schedule, all right? But you make a cake and you say, praise God, you taste it. But if you give someone a, a cake, a full cake, and you say, I want to give you this cake, and you got a slice missing from the cake, you're going to look at them like, uh, is something missing here? I thought you were going to give me a, 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 a whole cake. Why, 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 why did I see a big old chunk missing out of that cake? So if something is missing from that cake, that means I didn't get a whole cake. I didn't get a complete cake. Now the cake was good, but there was something missing. But I want to tell you, Jesus says, I want to give you a gift, praise the Lord, that there's nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. Listen, nothing missing in your finances, 
nothing missing in your emotions, nothing missing in your relationships, nothing missing at all. You'll be complete. You'll be whole. Glory to God. And this is my gift from you. So when work and stress try to come, he said, no, 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 I got a better gift than that. Amen. When frustration try to come to you or whatever, no, no, I, I don't receive that. I got a better, better gift, and it's called a gift of peace. Praise the Lord. So let me just give you a go to these. And again, I'm going to be very practical, you know, and we're just going to talk about this thing, you know, praise the Lord. And you don't need a lot of heavy things during Christmas time because you got a lot of things going on. So I just want to make it very practical and things, you know, because again, in the world, and this is what it says now, in the world, you're going to have tribulations, you're going to have trials, you're going to have stress, you're going to have frustration. Listen, the world's going to try to stress you out. Okay? Worry and stuff like that. Not this year. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You're going to have a very, very Merry Christmas. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When people try to come about the junk and a lot of drunks, say, no, not this year. Leave that at the door. All right? No, no. Are you going to bring all that in? No. Leave it at the door because this year I'm going to be complete. I'm going to be whole. There's going to be nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing. But, and you definitely not going to stress me out. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, no bill collector going to stress you out. When they're going to threaten you, I say, well, you know what? We'll see you in 2022. <laughs> we'll talk about it. But we're going to talk about it this Christmas. Praise the Lord. Because I'm going to be whole. I'm going to be complete in Jesus because I receive the gift of peace. Everybody say the gift of peace. Yeah, so let's go over these right quick to heaven. Number one, these are four, and really I will give you 12, but we'll do four each particular week, all right? Everybody heard of the 12 days of Christmas? Yeah. All right, these are the 12 ways to overcome stress and worry this Christmas. Number one, stop looking to the world system to help you. You, 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 you feel stress is coming upon you, you feel worry coming in, and you're like, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, oh what am I going to do, okay? I think I'll, look, I'll turn the TV, and maybe they can get some help. No. I think I'll turn to the talk show. Maybe they're going to get help. No. I think I'll turn to the 10 o'clock bad news. Let me admit, no. Stop looking to the world and this world is system. And there's two reasons why you don't look to the world world system. Number one, the world system, number one, is against God. It's, a, it's against God. First John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So I don't go to this world system to overcome problems that I have. Second reason why I don't go to the world, because everything, listen to me now. Everything the world has to offer to you is temporary. It won't last long. It's only for a short period of time. And you need something that's going to take you through for the long haul. So I can look to the world for answers. When stress tries to come against me, when world, world, world tries to come against me, when depression tries to come against me, when frustration tries to come against me, sometimes people tell me, Pastor, I get depressed during Christmas time. And it will come. I'm not denying it won't come, but I'm going to show you how to deal with that situation, whatever tries to come against you, so you can have a peaceful Christmas. Let's look at our scripture. John chapter 14, verse 200 through verse 23. And as you turn to that, we realize that much of the stress and worry comes from the false notion that there is a solution around the corner that does not involve God, prayer, the word of God, and the teachings of Jesus. And the world system says, now I'm gonna show you how to deal with this, but it's not gonna include God, it's not gonna include the word of God, it's not gonna include prayer, and it's not going to include the teachings of Jesus. And I'm going to show you something. And I'm going to tell you right now, there is no solution without God, without the word of God, without prayer, and without the teachings of Jesus to overcome any situation that comes to your life. Now watch this right here. <clears throat> now this is Jesus talking. He says, those who accept my commandments 
Now remember what Jesus' commandments are. Jesus' commandment is not love the Lord God all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. That's not Jesus' commandment. That's the commandment of the law. Jesus' commandment is a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. How? How? As I what? I love you. Now I give you this commandment. You're going to love people the way Jesus loved you. You're not going to love people the way they treat you. That's the way the world says. The world says, you know, you talk about me, I'm going to talk about you. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. That's the world system. But Jesus says, watch this, those who accept my commandments and, watch this, obey them are the ones who love me. I want to stop right there because, especially if you watch this by Facebook, if I were to ask you a question, do you love Jesus? Probably 99% of people ask the question, oh yeah, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Now here's the issue. You love Jesus based on your standards, but is it based on Jesus' standards? Because Jesus gives us a qualified to those who really love him. He says, those who really love me are those who accept my commandments and obey them. And when you accept the commandments of Jesus, that you love people the way Jesus loved you, and give that to people instead of how you feel, instead of how you've been treated, instead of how people think about you, he says, now you are really showing you really love me. So I declare, praise the Lord, that probably half the people watching this really don't love Jesus, according to Jesus' standards. Now they may like Jesus, they may believe in Jesus, but they really love him. All right? He says, and because, now watch this now, and because they love me, why? Because they obey my commandments, they act on them, accept them. Watch this. My Father will love them. Yeah. Now I'm going to say some things here that may be controversial. <clears throat> I, I, I see sometimes we tell people, well, God loves everybody. All right? God loves everybody. But here's something here. Jesus didn't say God will love them. He said my father will love them. Now, you can't be a father unless you have a relationship with children. Now, I want you to get this now, all right? See, when you have a relationship with children, now you can say he's my father. And the world knows him as God, but they don't know him as his father. And when you know God as father, then you know the father loves me. Why? Because I will accept Jesus' commandment and obey it. I'm just pleading. I know this sounds wrong, but I got to preach the truth. Because there are people who think they can do anything they want to and say, well, father, he's going to love me all the time. Not according to the scripture. He didn't say you hate you, but he says, we well, love me. And not only I love you, watch this. He says, and I, watch this, and with conjunction, watch this. Jesus says, I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Oh, my goodness. Glory to God. So Jesus said, not only I'm going to love you, he says, but I'm going to reveal some things to you that will be a blessing unto you. And when you get a revelation of Jesus reveals some things to you, I want to tell you, listen, there is no devil in hell that can stop you. There's no worry that can stop you. There's no frustration that can stop you. There's no distress. Because now the revelation of Jesus now comes inside of me. And it's all predicated because Jesus, listen, I'm going to obey your commandments and I, listen, and I'm going to accept them. Boy, I can tell you sometimes in my life, when I want to just get in my flesh, sometimes physically, I just want to knock somebody's head off. <laughs> now, I know none of you never felt that before, all right? You just so little, no, I would be compared. Boy, I mean, listen, I mean, sometimes, I'm, sometimes I wanted to dig up the book of Cuss before I got saved, okay? You know, some, some of y'all know the book of Cuss, you, you buried it. <laughs> and you just want to build it up, you want to say some things. Like, oh my goodness, I want to tell you a few things here that I've been holding back for a long time. I want to give up to you. 
And I was about those things, and Jesus said, no. Did I do you that way? When you made me mad. <sighs> well, they hurt me, I understand. He says, but did I forgive you when you hurt me? He said, now, Ronnie, he said, now, if you really want to love me, you're going to obey my commandments, even in the midst of a test. Even in the midst when family members try to stress you out, and frustration try to come against you, and, 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 and all this kind of stuff, and worry and depression try to come against you. He says, I just want you to, to love people the way I love you. When you're going through a difficult time, don't have a pity party. Find somebody to love them the way I love you. And that will be the signal that you really love me. And not only that, he said, now watch this. You're going to experience my father's love in you. And what's going to happen is, he said, listen, we're going to reveal ourselves to you. Wow. Because I'm going to love people the way Jesus loved me. At Christmas time. Verse 22, Judas, not Iscariot, but the other disciples that name, said to him, Lord, watch this. Why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? He said, now you're going to do it to us, watch this now, not, 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 not to people who I believe in Jesus, but to followers of Jesus, to ones who are committed to Jesus. Why are you going to do that, Lord? Why are you going to build some stuff to us that not to the entire world? And watch this now. Jesus replied, watch this. All who love me will do what I say. Yeah. That don't sound like he's going to love everybody. Does it? Does, does this sound like uh, Jesus said, everybody? No, he said, all who love me will do what I say. Now watch this. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. Glory to God. We want to come in this situation. We understand, listen, worry, depression, and frustration is trying to come against you. He said, but when you make a decision that you want to love Jesus the way he, and love people the way that, he says, guess what? We're going to come on you and supply you with everything you need, not only to manage the stress, but to get rid of the stress. Not only to manage the worry, but to get rid of it, to eradicate it once and for all. I'm talking about Christmas time. Hallelujah, glory. So again, I don't look to the world for answers. I look to Jesus. Jesus, teach me how to love you. Love people the way you love me. See, sometimes it don't take great things, just a little small acts of kindness. I'm talking about people, listen, who've been mean to you. I know it's not required to say goodbye, church, but I'm talking about during the Christmas time. <laughs> this is a wonderful opportunity to be nice to people who've been mean to you. People you know been talking about you behind your back. You know it. Why? Because they told you. I've been talking about your back. And you're like, no, they didn't. And you just gotta say, you know what, Jesus, teach me how to love them. Because if they gotta talk to me behind my back, that means they're hurting. That means they're going through some things. And I need to show the love of Jesus to them. That's what they need. And I'm telling you, once you start doing that particular way, you'll just find all this, you're distressed and worried, the depression, all that stuff that's coming into the world, it'll start leaving. And you'll just walk around smiling. That's number one. Number two, second. I'm just talking about how to defeat worry and defeat stress during the Christmas time. Number two, stop trying to please everybody. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through verse 42. Stop trying to impress everybody. Now, I didn't say be nice to people. I'm just trying to impress everybody. Verse 38 through verse 42. Go as God. He says, as Jesus and disciples continued on the way to Jerusalem, 
They came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into their home. Anybody expect the people to come to your house this year? Praise the Lord. Anybody expect you to go to my house at Christmas time? You don't visit. You all right? So she welcomed her home. All right? Now, I want you to keep in mind that disciples, you know, 12 disciples, and, and you had Jesus, and, and many times they, they, they had a lot of people to come with them, and, you know, and so his Martha welcomed all these folk into a home. A bunch of people. Okay? And it could be maybe 20, 25 people into a home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. So Martha is welcome. Say, everybody come on in. And Mary sitting at the feet, Jesus teaching, she's sitting there. Verse 40. But Martha was distracted. Everybody say distracted. Distracted. Now, anybody ever been distracted before? All right. Now, her duty was to welcome people in the home. Hey, how you doing? Good seeing you. How's the family? Fine. Oh, you look so well today. Come on in, all right? And she's just having a good time, you know. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, she get distracted. Why did she get distracted? It says, but Martha distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, no, no, Lord. All right. Uh, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sit here? You know, she, 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 she may have a little black there, all right? <laughs> just sit here and I do all the work? <clears throat> tell her, not her, tell her to come and help me. I'm doing all the work. I'm well, listen, I'm preparing the food, I'm cleaning, I'm doing all this stuff right here, you know. And, and this is my sister, and we live here together, and, and I'm doing all this work, you know. And, and now she just sitting here. Just sitting here, not doing nothing. Just, just sitting here, all right? Sit here. Now, this is why she's doing it. She just sitting here. She's moving, Mary sitting. She's working, Mary's sitting. And so Martha got a little, you know, like I said, you know, she may have a little black girl. You know, I'm doing all the work, all right? Tell her come and help me. Verse 41. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. Now he didn't say this. Not, listen, he's not saying you shouldn't be concerned. Didn't say you shouldn't take business. But evidently, this thing was affecting Martha so much, but it's now affected her attitude that she had because here's all these folk hungry, ready to eat and everything, you know, and she wondered how she could prepare all this stuff and fix them all this food, and she's doing it all the work by herself. And it says, now, Martha, you worried and you upset over all these details. Well, Jesus, aren't you concerned about details? Yes. But not the details get to a point where you get so worried and upset and it changed your demeanor. All right? Now, you know you go to somebody's house when they welcome you and you're friendly and everything else. But you go to somebody's house and you can tell they upset and worried. you like, I ain't really eating yet. I mean, I mean, I'm good. She, she acted that particular way. You want me to eat her food? I don't know. All right? And Jesus says, there is only one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing. One thing to be concerned about. This Christmas, I know you got to buy gifts. I know you're preparing dinner. I know you got to do a lot of details. And we're not minimizing those things. And yes, you have to do those things. But Jesus, I'm talking about Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. He says, listen, there's only one thing during this Christmas season, the main, everybody say the main thing. The main thing. That you ought to be concerned with. What is this? He said, Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken from her. What did Mary 
discovered. Mary discovered that, listen, in the midst of a situation, if I just sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to his words, then I can download revelation. He'll give me what I need to do, how to take care of that situation. Praise the Lord. Because I believe that, listen, if Martha would have sat at the feet of Jesus and like Mary did, when it's time for dinner, she would have no how to handle these folk who were hungry. And says, you know what, guys? Instead of me serving you, today's going to be a buffet. I'm going to put the food out. You get what you need to get. And by the way, I need a cleanup committee. See, see I'm talking about when you get revelation for Jesus. Amen. Can I get some volunteers when we get ready to clean up a mess? Can I get you to take care of this? Can I get you to take care of this? What has happened? Jesus gives you revelation, gives you wisdom how to take care of some things when the world cannot teach you. Did you know when you take care of Jesus' business, you'll never get upset? I never. Now, one time doing what Jesus told me to do, I got upset. Now, there's never one time when Jesus told me to do something, I got worried. There's never one time when Jesus told me to do so, I got frustrated. Never. When you do it, Jesus way. But guess what? You got to sit long enough, you got to teach. And that's why it's important for your devotion time. When you spend enough time in the morning time to get instructions for Jesus, okay, Jesus, I got this committee, I got this thing I need to do at work, I got this meeting, I, I got all these things that I take care of, I got to do this now. now. Jesus, let me get quiet and sit at your feet and let you teach me how to take care of these things I need to take care of. And I want to tell you, if you do that, my friends, listen, you won't be a people pleaser, you'll be a God pleaser because you're doing it God's way, and when you do it God's way, you'll get God results every time. And then never with frustration. Free preacher. I'm just telling you. Pastor Simmons, why are you going to get frustrated? Because I, not with people. Not with people. Why? Because I want Jesus to teach me how to handle this situation. Because I know when I do it his way, I have his perfect peace. And there's no confusion. There's no stress. There's no frustration. There's no worry. When I do it Jesus' way. I had on, um, you know, and, and, and you got to realize that, you know what, I'm not here to impress people. I like people, but I want to impress Jesus, first of all. So Jesus said, you want to impress me, Ronnie, sit at my feet and let me teach you some things. He'll teach you. Glory to God. He'll give you instructions of things that the world can't do it. He'll show you about people. He'll show you who to come around, and sometimes he'll tell you show the people who maybe stay away from what I'm. Now, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if there's some person who's stressing you out all the time, all the time they come around, every time you go around them, they stress you out all the time. I'm talking about all the time. Jesus, teach me. Two words, stay away. <laughs> it don't take a rocket scientist. Stay away and pray. Hallelujah. Now why you keep beating yourself up? You know when you're going over there, y'all gonna get in a fight. Stay at home. You don't have to go. Well, if I don't go, then what are they gonna think about me? They're gonna think about it anyway. Praise the Lord. And you, you go to a house getting all upset, throwing stuff and everything else, you know. People come to your house and they, you know, you're supposed to be welcome them. You mad at everybody and everything else. You throw the food on the table, whatever it is. They like, okay. There's gonna be a short visit here this Christmas. Praise the Lord. Can we get real up in here? I'm talking about how to deal with stuff that we deal with all the time. We try to sweep it around. And I'm saying, Jesus wants you to have a peaceful Christmas and stop getting oppressing people and say, Jesus, if I impress you, you'll show me how to deal with people. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, it was good in a way. Amen. Amen. Now, I like this thing that says uh, 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 Martha was distracted. One of the jobs of frustration and stress and worry is to get you distracted. Get you off course. And what am I distracted from? I'm distracted from receiving peace of Jesus. And I want to tell you, peace is a dis distraction buster. 
When you got a piece of Jesus, it will distract. Listen, it will bust distraction. It will bust worry. It will bust fear. It will bust confusion. It will bust all that. When you say, Jesus, I thank you for the peace I have. And you won't get distracted. Glory to God. Because, listen, you do this one thing over here. You don't finish that, and then you do this one thing over here, you don't finish that, and you do this one thing over here, and you get five things, and you try to do all things, and guess what? None of them get done. Why? Because you got distracted. And all because you're trying to impress people. Be yourself in Jesus. Say this, I will, I will. Be, myself. be myself. Now some of y'all act like you want to say, I'm just going to help you now. I'm talking about Christmas. Say this, I will, I will. Be, myself. be myself with the peace of Jesus. Jesus. Now, folk won't understand. Folk will criticize you just like Marvin did, or you just don't care. Who you think you are? Why are you not like us? Because I'm not like you. I want to see the feet of Jesus, and He's going to tell me how to deal with this situation. And once I get an answer, I'll come and tell you, and this is what we're going to do. It works all the time. Hallelujah. Number three, put faith in God. That sounds so simple. Oh, just put faith in God. Look at let's Hebrews 11 and 6. We have faith in God that he will deliver on his promises. And no one or no system can get in the way of making it happen. Verse 6, Hebrews chapter 11. But without faith. What is faith? Faith is a correct, confident, corresponding action to what we believe for. Let me say it again. Faith is a correct, confident, and corresponding action to what we believe for. That's when I have faith. It's, it's correct. It, 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 it's, it builds a sense of confidence. And now there is a corresponding action to what I'm believing for. He says, for without faith it's impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. Without this confidence, without this correction, without this corresponding action, I, 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 this not only I can't please him, but I'm not satisfying to the Father. Why? For whoever will come near to find to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the reward of those, watch this, who earnestly and diligently seek him out. God, I'm a God chaser. I'm seeking you out, Father. I'm seeking you for answers to my questions. I'm seeking you for a solution to my problems. I'm seeking you, God. I bring this thing to you, God. Why? Because I want you to be satisfied with me. If I say satisfied. satisfied. Do you want this Christmas for God that says I'm satisfied with you? Why? Well, get his peace. And use the faith that will be in God. Well, word come. I understand. Stress is coming. I understand. Doubt is coming. I understand. Depression is coming. I understand. Lord is coming. I understand that. And that's why you need your faith. When you can't see it. When it seems there's no way out. When it seems your back is against the wall. God, I seek you out and I reach you. Now. You know when you... you you know when you're really, really walking in faith. When you really walk in faith. When you thank God for the answer and you don't see it yet. When you thank God for the answer and you don't see it yet. Before it happens, that's when you really walk in faith. When you thank God for the answer. When you thank God for the promotion, when you thank God for the raise, when you thank God for the breakthrough, when you thank God for the deliverance, when you thank God for that, when you thank God for the healing, when you thank God for all those things before you even see it, when you thank God for it in advance, that's when you know you're walking in faith and that's when you please God. Well, I want to wait till I see it. Well, you don't need faith then. Anybody can do that. Well, when I see it, I believe God. That's not faith. 
Believing God is giving thanksgiving unto God in the midst of what you're going through. You got a pain in your body. You know, you went to, I mean, you're stretching out, you're worrying, whatever it is. God, I just want to give you thanksgiving unto you. God, thank you. You gave me the answer already. Jesus, I worship you. I honor you, Father. I want to be satisfactory. God, I seek you out. And while your hands are going up, while you surrender all unto the Lord, now what happens is God is downloading things into you, showing you, oh, oh you need to do this. Oh, okay, I never looked at that before. Oh, yeah. Oh, I need to call this person. Oh, yeah, hey, man, I'm, I'm dealing this situation. Oh, yeah, I'm not thanking the Lord. That, that's what faith is. I mean, that's that, that, that's your truly faith. And he'll give you that. But you start thanking the Lord. Instead of you, you know, complaining and grumbling and whatever it is, you know, and you know, nobody loves me. I can't never get it right. That's not faith. Do you think that's satisfactory to God when you complain about stuff when you don't have the answer? No. You start lifting up your hands and start giving thanks to God. And what's happening? That peace of God will come against you. Hallelujah! And God to you in his presence. And you'll start smiling. Why? Because although you don't see it yet. It's there. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things we hope for and evidence we don't see yet. Hallelujah! How in faith? I start giving thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now watch this now. I like this when I wrote this. It says this. He says, no one or nothing should be able to get away with these things happening in your life. That includes worry. That includes, see, you need to start talking to worry and start talking to stress and talking to pressure because, listen, if you don't talk to it, it's going to talk to you. And you need to open up your mouth and just don't sit there and say, now listen here, worry. Listen to press. Listen here, uh, stress. Listen, you, you're not going to do that to me. Not this time. You're not going to come against me, not this time. You're not going to come against my family, not this time. You're not going to come against my children, not this time. You're not going to come against my husband, come against my wife, come against my lover. Listen, not this time. Listen, you are not coming against me. No, no, no. In the name I declare in Jesus, I walk in victory. I have a peace of God. I, listen, our family will have a peaceful family. And never have a peaceful Christmas. Now, you, you know when you have Christmas dinner, you know that uncle always show up? You know, a little, don't have a little tipsy before you got there? Come on. All right, then maybe y'all don't have that. Or the aunt, praise the Lord. Or the cousin, always come back and crazy and want to start something. So you started claiming the name of Jesus. No, not this year. I'm speaking right now. My home be a home of peace. It be all peaceful. Soon they start acting crazy. They come in for one minute and two minutes, they out the door. They can't stay there. They like, I can't stay here now. What's wrong? It's something. I don't know, man. I, don't, I, don't, I thought I'm coming crazy, man. And start coming here, man. Something start happening here. Whatever it is, man. I, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, man, I got this bottle right here, man. I was going to take a drink of it, man. I'm just going to pour it down the drain. I got to go. I, go. <laughs> I want to tell you, the peace of God and that stuff can't exist in the same place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And number four, this is good. During this Christmas, identify your life needs and focus on what really matters. See, sometimes we major in the minors and minors in the majors. Something we just need to let go and get over it. Little stuff. Look at. Luke chapter 12, verse 22, verse 23. And we'll leave, we'll close off this. <coughs> My wife has a saying, she says, you know what? You gotta come to a point in your life where you don't sweat the small stuff. Say this, I don't I sweat the small stuff. Sweat the Say, I will not, I will not sweat, the stuff. sweat the small stuff. Let it go! Small stuff. Getting you all upset? Getting your blood pressure up high, sweating and whatever it is, can't see right. Cause it's small stuff. Just sit down, take a break, and find out what really matters. What really matters? It says, then turn to the disciples. Jesus says, This is why I tell you, watch this not to worry about everyday life. 
Some of you worrying about stuff you shouldn't be worrying about. I'm talking about Christians. And you wonder why you don't have peace with God? Because worry will destroy your peace. He says, stop worrying about stuff. See, worry, what is worry? Worry is negative meditation on the wrong information. Negative meditation on the wrong information will lead to worry. I'm going to say that again. Because I'm not need to hear that. Worry is negative meditation on the wrong information. And Jesus says, listen, don't worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or enough to eat, clothes to wear. He says, for life is more than food and your body more than clothes. Oh my goodness, what, what, what if I fix this dish, you know, and they don't like it? Everybody say so. Everybody say so. so. Well, you know, what, what if I put too much sugar in the cake this year? Everybody say so. So. <laughs> oh, what, what if the bread didn't quite get always done in the side? Everybody say so. So. Okay. See, you let small stuff worry you. What are people gonna think about it? Glory to God. And stop complaining if you make something. Oh, child, I made this funny and it, it wasn't my best. Now they was gonna eat until you said that. <laughs> They're like, what? my goodness. <laughs> it wasn't? Oh, no, it was my best. Said, I'm tired. You know. You know, children that grazing and what it is, and I threw something together. I, I forgot how much I put in it, what it is, but he eat it. They like, oh, no, no, no. But you say, you know what? I know you're gonna enjoy this food. This is gonna be so good for you. God bless me, man. I want you to take some of it. See what happened? See, stop worrying about stuff. Negative meditation, wrong information. Okay. This year, as I close out. Uh, let me say this then. We ought to enjoy our fellowship with God and the people he's put in our lives. Our Heavenly Father will take care of your needs if we don't have to focus so much on them. Uh, this year has been a, been a great year, but you know, been uh, some challenges because uh, it's been, you know, many of you may, may know that there's uh, that uh, I'm 64 years young. I'm glad God has blessed me with health. But, you know, I'm on Facebook and I I, uh, I get these messages and we have what we call the uh, East High Alumni uh, Such Association of Facebook. And they let know some things are going on and so forth and all. And this year I've had five of my classmates I graduated in 1975. Five of my classmates transitioned this year. And four of them I was very close to. And the beginning of this year, they was in like perfect health. Doing things, they had family. They had businesses, they had organizations, they had, they had a lot of things going on. Like I said, four of them I was real close to. And, and one of them was my best friend growing up. I mean, we were best friends. Listen, we were so best friends in high school, we even dressed alike. <laughs> I mean, we went on that day, they go. Real close. And uh, transcribed. But what I'm saying, I'm saying that you have to get to a point when you really find out what life is all about. Yes, we take care of details and things like that, and I'm not saying shun responsibilities. I'm not saying that at all. We walk in excellence. Yes, we continue to do that. We we continue to take care of business. I know we continue to do that. We do that. I'm not listen. I'm not saying neglect all that. But at the end of the day. When all the things are settled, it still has to deal with the people who are around you. And yet you may not always agree with them all the time and may not understand them all the time. You may have given some there. 
but I'm saying this is that cherish people in your life. And I want to reiterate what Pastor Terry says. Take advantage of every opportunity to spend time with family. If it's nothing but an email or a text message or a phone call or a greeting or something that simply says, you know what? I just want to tell you I appreciate you and I value you. Like I said, five classmates helped me beginning this year. And now they all transition to do that. And I'm saying during this Christmas season, focus on what matters the most next to Jesus, next to relationship with your father, the most important valuable thing that you have is family. That's when they gave a survey of elderly people. And elderly people had this one quest when they found out they was about to, trans to transition. This was the number one request that they said I do, do not want to die alone. I want my family around me. And so as we enter this Christmas season and, 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 and talk about again how to have a stress-free Christmas, follow Jesus for a peaceful Christmas. I want your Christmas to be whole. I want to be complete. And I want to be in life. Let us stand. We're going to take our confession regarding following Jesus for a peaceful Christmas that we have. Like I said, remember these things I share with you. No, I went real deep and whatever it is, a lot of theological or whatever things are there. But just some practical things that you think about yourself. Even think about your job, people that you're around. You know, hey, you may not get along, but you know what? You're there for a reason. You are there to spread some joy and some peace in people's lives. This is what really matters that, that we have to do that. You know, I was gone for my job a couple weeks ago, a couple for two weeks, you know, and I had people come to me like, oh, we, we, we miss you so much. And I didn't know they existed. I'm like, oh, you did? Yeah, you did, you did. So far, so far, so far. When you, when you, when you been? No. no. So I said, no, you been. So I was like, no, I've been trying to find my time. They let me know they care. And you'd be surprised that people around you really care about you. You don't think so. They really care about you. They may not ever tell you that, but they really care about, concern about you. And so you thank God for that. All right, let's take these five confessions. Confession of God and follow Jesus for a peace of Christmas. Number one, say this. I confess, I confess that, I that I will follow Jesus and experience, and experience a, peaceful Christmas a peaceful Christmas this year. This year. Number two, say I confess, I confess that, I that I will not look to the things of this world, to the world system, to the world system to, overcome to overcome the world worry, worry, and stress, and stress that, but look to God, but look to God, prayer, prayer, prayer the, word God, the Word of God, and the teachings of Jesus. The word of God, and the teachings of Jesus. Number three. So I, confess I confess that I will stop trying, I will stop trying to, impress to impress everyone, but pursue, but pursue God's, approval. God's approval. Number four, so I confess, I confess that I have faith, I have faith that, God that God will deliver, will deliver on, his promise. on His promise. Number five, so I confess, I confess that I will focus, I will focus on what really matters in life. On what really matters in life. I will enjoy, I will enjoy my fellowship with God. And the people, and the people he, placed he placed in my life, in my life because my heavenly Father, my heavenly Father will, take care will take care of my needs, of my needs. So, I do not have to so I do not have to focus, focus much, much on them. Amen. Let's take our prayer commitment. Ready? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I will follow Jesus and experience a peaceful Christmas this year. I thank you that I can always look to you through prayer, the word of God, and the teachings of Jesus. I only seek your approval 
I have faith that you will deliver on your promises, and I enjoy the fellowship that I have with you and the people you have placed in my life. As I realize this, I understand, Father, that you have given me a grace to follow your son in 2021. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Now listen, here watch about Facebook broadcast. <coughs> Talk about having a peaceful Christmas this year. You remember that when Jesus was born, there were shepherds in the field. And an angel came to them and said, Fear not, for unto you this day, born in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And then the Bible talks about that there was a host of angels in the heavens. It filled up all the heavens. And this was the message it says to them. Peace on earth and goodwill toward men. That was a pronouncement 2,000 years ago. Peace on earth. And I'm going to tell you some 2,000 years later, that same message that you can receive, that those shepherds receive, peace. Yes, it's a quietness, it's a calmness, it's a rest, but it's also a wholeness. It's a completeness. It's being wealthy. It's being prosperous. My friends, unless you receive Jesus, you never receive that peace in your life. And I want to give you an opportunity to receive the peace that Jesus gives. He says, the world cannot give you this peace. All right? He says, I can give you this peace. And not only I give you this peace, listen, it says it will not hurt you. It will not harm you. Why? Because I have deprived of his power to overcome you. That's what he wants to give you today, my friend. He wants to give you this peace. And if you never receive that peace, you can receive it today. Why? Accepting Jesus, your personal Lord and Savior. Accepting Jesus, your personal Lord and Savior. If you're here today, listen to my, my voice. I want you to just say, Jesus, I receive your peace. I welcome your peace. Not only will I have a peaceful Christmas, I have a peaceful life. Worry free, stress free. Jesus, you didn't come to help me manage stress and manage worry. You came to deliver me from it. And now I receive it as my Lord, my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. I admit, I believe, I confess. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you just prayed that prayer, then I want to say congratulations. Thank you for receiving the best gift that you can ever receive. And that is the gift of peace. Wholeness in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in your finances, in your relationships, in your prayers being answered, in all those things, this peace that passes all understanding, he gives unto you. So I want to thank you. Now, if you've just done that, say congratulations again. Listen, there's a number on your screen that you can call and, and, and we're going to hear from you. That number is 615-223-0420. 615-223-0420. And you can receive this peace. Thank you for that. And if someone will get back in contact with you. Maybe you don't have a church family. What a wonderful time to adopt a new family during Christmas time. House of Faith Christian Center, we'd be glad to receive you. Just call that number, 615-223-0420, and guess what? We'll get back in contact with you. And we believe that this year, you'll have a peaceful Christmas. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we praise God for that word, and we're going to continue on worshiping the Lord right now. Uh, this is... Uh, the last first Sunday this year, 2021. And we want you to be prepared to end in 2022. How? By getting ready now. And how you do that? By partaking of the Lord's Supper. So listen, go quickly, go get your cup, your uh, juice, get your cracker, and, and, and we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. And it's been so much to you. See, you can experience this peace of Jesus by communion with Jesus at the table. 
praise the Lord. Glory to God. So we, as we pass out the communion that we have here, we hope that you get yours. And now the Bible says this, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and after he had given thanks, he blessed it and said, take this as my body, eat. For as often as you do this, do the remembrance of me. And after like manner, he took the cup and he blessed it after he gave him thanks. He said, this is the New Testament in my body. So as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. And so we partake of the Lord's Supper. We partake of the bread. We partake of the cup, which is the broken body of Jesus and the shed blood of Jesus. And, and we want you to fellowship with us. Holy communion. If you want a peace that you never experienced before, commune with Jesus. He is the one that gives you that. And so again, uh, do that. So while we do this, see, this bread that we take, it symbolizes, it, re it recommends, listen, it, 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 it stands for the body of Christ. This juice that we take stands for, represents, symbolizes the shed blood of Jesus. And we are communion with him. We are communion with this peace that he gives to us that we have. And I want to tell you, my friend, I can't explain it, but when you take this communion, you, you're going to experience it like a peace that comes like, oh my goodness. Because Jesus gives us to me. It's his gift to you. He says, often as you do this, there's a number of things. So we take the bread, broken body, do I hear? Let us eat. We take the juice, our shed blood of Jesus. Without shed of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Let us drink. Father, for the life of Jesus, his body, his blood, his teachings, his ministry, and his life for us, that we will have a peaceful Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you so kindly for being obedient and partaking of the Lord's Supper. And uh, uh, we know that your life, listen, it's going to be a blessing. The things you'll be faced with, realize Jesus has overcome and deprived his power to hurt and harm you in his name. Uh, we believe that Jesus is the unspeakable gift. We believe that Jesus has come to set us free. And listen, we cannot pay Jesus for everything we've done, but we can say thank you. And so if you like to participate in our offerings uh, that we have, uh, we give you three ways that you can participate. First, with text giving, then you can go there, download the app for that as well. Uh, House of Faith Christian Center, you can go ahead and, and get your offerings and go ahead and, 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 and uh, share them right now. Praise the Lord. But we want you to participate in what we because we get excited about giving here at House of Faith Christian Center. This is the season of giving. And you can share in that. So you can give through text giving or you can give through online giving. Online giving basically is go to our website, which is House of Faith Christian Center.org, House of Faith Christian Center.org, and uh, just slash giving and uh, follow the instructions, electronic giving that we have, and uh, just follow it says donate. Hit click on that one there, and then you can just share that we have. And then the third way you do is get through checks. Uh, uh, through uh, money order, through the mail, our post office box, House of Faith Christian Center, post office box, 985 Smyrna, Tennessee, zip code 37167, and then you can give that particular way that that may be happening. So, uh, uh, we want to get excited about this type of gift because it is a season of giving, and we praise God for you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. You hit House of Faith, you're not giving it off the Lord. We'll walk around and we'll receive that right now. Just hold up your hand. You want to go share it, we'll go ahead and, and receive that in the name of Jesus. And while we're just doing that, let me just pray a blessing for you right now. Uh, glory to God. Because again, God blesses the gift and the giver that we have. Father, we just want to thank you for this period of offertory. We just love and honor you, Father God. We just pray, Father God, thanks for those who participate in this offering of uh, giving that they offer themselves, they surrender themselves unto you. That lives will never be the same, Father God. And we realize that the gift that leaves that hand never leaves the earth. We pray the blessings of God upon them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so kindly uh, for giving, and we appreciate that uh, as, as well. And uh, remember your gifts that you give. Uh, we appreciate it to them, and that uh, uh, they are always, always, praise the Lord, blessed by the Lord. Remember again that God loves a cheerful giver. 
give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, chain together, and run it over. Glory to God. Well, listen, uh, I want to thank you, Facebook, uh, for uh, being a part of this broadcast, being a part of this worship experience. Praise the Lord as we get into this festivity season, uh, the most wonderful time of the year. To, and we say thank God for you that you've taken out your busy schedule to be a part of what God is doing here at House of Faith Christian Center. Again, House of Faith Christian Center, praise the Lord. We're going to beautiful spirit of Jim, Tennessee. Uh, we have a threefold vision. And that is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, and discipleship and ministry. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center, letting you know again that Jesus Lord and continue to show compassion in your actions. And we'll see you next time. God bless you.